Hi, I'd like to welcome everybody to this lesson, which is the elements of the research design process. Um, in this lesson, we're going to kind of take a look at critical thinking skills to review information, explain a little bit about statistical analysis, and to translate, interpret, and summarize research and statistical data. We're going to apply the elements of the design process and apply science and mathematics to the development of the plans, process, and projects that address real-world problems. So let us now begin. In the elements of the research design process, an example would be an owl inspiring the design of a new bullet train in Japan. An engineer is tasked with making trains faster and quieter, looked to owl feathers as a model for dampening noise. By observing the natural world, engineers discovered important variables to study. This presentation is going to walk you through the process of recognizing the variables to consider for a research study. You will learn the different ways that you can analyze these variables and compare the results that you gather. Research design is different from the research method. Research design is the group of strategies you employ to solve a problem, while the methods are part of the design. You choose your methods for collecting data at different stages, from observation to testing, in order to execute a complete research project. You go through the effort of creating a research problem statement to establish the design of a study, whether quantitative, qualitative, or mixed. Answer research questions. And then as you assemble a problem statement, you're outlining the design or structure that will guide you. Similarly, you must design for that study method, whether that method is a survey, a case study, an experiment that will help you gather relevant data to point you towards meaningful theories and solutions. So what we're going to talk about right now is defining and using variables. An important element of research design unfolds as you determine the necessary variables for a study. Variables are elements that can be measured or described. Consider the issue of a high-speed rail in the United States. Planners look at many criteria as they evaluate whether the high-speed trains can work as public transportation. Those criteria are the variables that the planners design a study around. The criteria includes populations of cities, the distance between cities, exiting a transit system, and traffic. A study variable may be something that we want to measure or something that we want to describe, such as when we conduct surveys or perform case studies. And variables may also be something that we want to manipulate. For example, when we set up an experiment. In experimental research, your goal is to change an independent variable to see how it affects dependent variables. And in this way, you can identify cause and effect relationships between variables. In an experiment, the independent variable is the cause and the dependent variable is the effect. For example, if the city of Tokyo wanted to perform an experiment to see if pricing caused an effect on bullet train ridership, Officials would change the independent variable, the cost of the ticket, to see how it affected the dependent variable, the number of riders. In non-experimental research, you do not manipulate an independent variable, often because you cannot or should not. Therefore, you study independent variables through surveys and case studies. For example, planners hoping to set up a high-speed rail on the West Coast, but it isn't immediately feasible to put a system in place and test whether or not people will use it. Instead, the planners will conduct surveys with the public and set up some case studies of the demographic group to gather data about who would use the train and how popular it would be. In these studies, the planners might ask survey questions about independent variables like costs, schedules, and destinations to learn about the behavior of the dependent variables ridership. 
Studies based on surveys and case study methodologies do not reveal cause and effect, but you can gather enough data to propose a theory, which you may eventually test with an experiment. In the case of a West Coast bullet train, the surveys and case studies revealed that the public was most likely to ride a train between Los Angeles and San Francisco, and plans are in the works. The first bullet train between the cities will itself be an experiment to determine whether high-speed rail is a viable option that can be extended along the West Coast. When you design a study based on surveys, there are three types of variables you will examine. Nominal, ordinal, and interval. Nominal variables are groups of data that cannot be measured or ranked. These variables give data as words and descriptions. On a survey, you create nominal variables when you offer multiple choice questions, yes, no questions, and demographic questions about ethnicity, gender, beliefs, geography, and so on. The answers to these types of questions can't be raked. However, you can measure how many responses you get. Ordinal variables can be ranked, or, as the name implies, you can put the responses in a logical order. When you create survey questions that ask people to rank an item based on a scale, such as from poor to excellent, or from disagree to agree, you create ordinal variables. You can calculate percentiles and medians with ordinals. Interval ratio variables are those you create when you use ranges of numbers as survey responses. For example, when you ask to choose an age range or a salary range. You can calculate averages with interval variables as well as ranges and standard deviations. All of these calculations will be discussed in more detail. Classifying and analyzing data. Variables point to the type of data that will be gathered or analyzed in a study. The results of descriptive surveys and case studies give you qualitative data that you can analyze to describe behaviors and attitudes about a problem. The results of explanatory surveys and experiments give you quantitative data or numbers that you can analyze and measure. The benefits of qualitative research are that you get data that gives you a picture of a problem and its features. In general, you start most research problems with qualitative research because you need a basic description just to get started. However, because you are looking for descriptions in the first place, the purposes of the study may not be clear from the beginning and therefore the study design may not reveal itself right away. To analyze qualitative data, you must be able to interpret the information you find, place it in categories, and then display your results. Some guidelines about gathering qualitative beta, data to make analysis more efficient are record the data right away, take detailed notes including time and date, and write out anything unusual that happens or that you observe. Interpret data as you record it. Start looking for patterns and record data. This is your most basic form of analysis when you're doing descriptive research. Eliminate unnecessary data. Group data into categories. By clustering and categorizing data, you find patterns. With qualitative data comes in the forms of words, you're looking for similar words in responses and place those responses in a group. This is a process known as coding. You can then connect these words with a the theme related to the main problem. The next step is to place the categories into a visual model, such as a chart or diagram, that can direct you towards a conclusion about the data. The practice of studying a visual model of data is known as matrix analysis. And then you can come to a conclusion and test that conclusion through a quantitative study. With quantitative research, you often come into the study knowing what you want to investigate. You already have a description to start with, and your goal to collect data in the form of numbers, put those numbers into categories, and then you count and measure those categories to create a statistical model. 
a visual that shows the relationship between all the results of the variables in your test. A study that gathers quantitative data is carefully designed along the principles of the scientific method so that any other researcher can duplicate it. To analyze quantitative data, you process the numbers and tabulate the results, or put the results into tables to get a better view of the relationship between the variables. The approaches can vary slightly between experimental and non-experimental data. Remember, the different types of variables, nominal, ordinal, and interval, used in surveys from earlier in this lesson, this is where you start to calculate them. Each category in a table responds to the variables you asked about in a survey, the questions you asked. The data corresponds to the responses you gathered. To get a full picture of the data results, you can create a frequency distribution table and a percentage distribution table. A frequency distribution organizes the table by the amount of results for each category and the responses, or basically how frequently people responded to a certain question. You can see at a glance how many people fall into a category, as well as the size of your sample and whether you have done your basic addition right. A percentage distribution organizes the table by the percentage of people or participants for each category and their responses rather than the amount. You divide the response to a specific variable by the total responses to find the percentage of responses. Next, you compute the descriptives, which are calculations that give a numeric description of the data categories. You typically calculate the following. The mean, which is the average of all scores for a variable. There is no mean for nominal or ordinal variables. The mode which is the most common score for a variable, the median, the exact middle score for a variable, the place of all scores in order and count them. If you have an odd number, then the median is the exact middle. For an even number, you find the average of the two scores in the middle. And there is no medium for nominal variables. And the maximum and minimum values, the highest and the lowest scores. Often, you can do your calculations in an Excel spreadsheet, which has built-in formulas and is very, very simple to tabulate. After you tabulate the data and calculate descriptives, you can disaggregate the data or pull it apart into separate ideas to compare variables and subcategories. When you sort data along these lines, you can better see the relationships that occur. Statistical models and study variables. A helpful way to see relationships is to create a excuse me, visual representation of the data with, with a statistical model. To create a graph or chart that shows how variables interact. The appropriate model depends on whether the data uses numeric or nominal variables and whether those variables are dependent or independent. The standard models you will encounter are linear regression, t-test, contingency table, and categorical table. The linear regression model uses numeric variables to show how an independent variable affects a dependent variable. You could show that a cost affects train ridership with linear regression. You would plot a line graph with the different ticket costs on the y-axis of a chart and the number of riders on the x-axis of the chart, the line would slope down to show that ridership decreased as prices rose. A t-test shows how numeric data is affected by a nominal or descriptive value. For example, the number of women who responded yes to riding the train and the number of women who responded no. You could typically display this kind of data information in a bar graph. A contingency table is usually shown as a pie chart, and in this case, you could show the relationship between nominal variables. Here you might have a large slice of pie for the percentage of women, a nominal variable, who responded yes, and a small slice of women who said no, along with a small slice for the percentage of men, another nominal variable, who responded yes, 
and a large slice for those who said no to riding on the train. Of course, I'm guessing these results, but it's just for example purposes. A categorical table shows the effect that a nominal value has on a numeric variable, and the information is shown on a line graph. This model is less commonly used than the other types. Drawing conclusions from data and models. To draw credible conclusions from your data, you must compare your results to your research question or hypothesis. At this stage, gather together every part of your study and begin the process of evaluation by following the basic steps below. 1. Write out the hypothesis of your study. 2. Take the data from your dependent variables and arrange the results with the hypothesis. 3. Look your statistical analysis below your results. 4. List any details about test validity and reliability for the dependent variables. 5. List details about internal and external validity. Results will not be valid if you gather data under poor conditions where the test or the sample could be unreliable. After following the steps above that I just discussed and determining that your results are relevant to the hypothesis and that your study design is valid, you can draw some credible conclusions and communicate that conclusion with your models as visual evidence to support your claim as part of a research report. So to summarize, as you figure out which variables you will need to perform a study, the design of your research starts to take shape. Variables point to the type of data that you gather and analyze in a study, and these variables will help determine the models you can use to represent your results. You will encounter three types of variables, nominal, ordinal, and interval variables, which are important to know when you work with surveys and case studies. Statistical models are helpful to ways to illustrate the relationships between the different variables you've used to conduct your study. These graphs and charts can show at a glance how your variables interact and give you powerful, a powerful tool for communicating your research findings. Look for some statistical models in the news. The media uses these tools to, to communicate complex ideas. To get your attention and emphasize an important, an important message, graphic designers build visuals off of statistics, such as images used to um, show movement in the stock market or political election results in the polls or various other statistics. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and thank you so much for your time.